What's up, everybody? Doriso here. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. For this episode, episode 13, I'll be going over my two holdings in my YouTube portfolio, which I happen to provide an update in each episode. If you're new to this channel, I've been depositing only $100 per episode so far to show beginners and investors with little money that it's possible to grow your stock portfolio to infinity by having individual stocks with explosive growth and upside potential. Keep this in mind. There's plenty of cash waiting on the sidelines. Luckily, there's a lot to learn at the beginner level. Both of my holdings in my YouTube portfolio are growth stocks that I think have more upside potential in 2020. I'll discuss my investment mindset as we level up to $10,000, which is our short-term goal at this time. Let's add a zero to our current portfolio value. As you could tell, one of my stocks, Penn National Gaming, has been flying up over 26% in just two weeks as of the time of this recording. An excellent example is Penn National's recent acquisition of Barstool Sports. Learning about the potential catalysts for a company are very important to any bull thesis. To wrap up the episode, I'll go over a question I received last week in the comment section from one of my past episodes, episode 11, asking about how I research stocks and analyze metrics like the P.E. ratio. Over time, you will learn that my investment philosophy is pretty simple. I'm a believer of the motto, keep it simple, stupid. Don't overcomplicate things when you don't have to. Falling into a hole called analysis paralysis can be very difficult to climb out. Plus, you may miss out on fantastic opportunities to multiply your hard-earned money in the stock market. I will summarize the importance of having catalysts, also known as headline news and announcements, which help spark a price movement in a company's stock price. That's what we all want to do, right? Let's get straight to it. Let's go over my two stocks I've added these past two months that I think are in some explosive growth markets. One being the online freelance market and two being the sports gambling market. As discussed in earlier episodes, Fiverr International and Penn National Gaming are two stocks that I believe have upside potential in 2020 as well as into the future. At this time, I currently own 18 shares of Fiverr and 15 shares of Penn National. So far, I've invested in multiple lots of stock in both positions to help lower my cost basis, which is called dollar cost averaging. Both stocks are in the green at the time of this recording. I also have a cash position of $289.73. Some quick math, 289 divided by the portfolio value of around 1356 is about a 21% cash position ready to put to work when I see a buying opportunity in Fiverr, Penn National, or possibly a new holding that's on my research board. Between me and you, I have quite a few on my research board. Growth stocks, dividend stocks, recession-proof stocks, all are on my list, so stay tuned. For this episode, I really want to highlight Penn National Gaming, which is up about 26% since I heard about the acquisition of Barstool Sports, which was a major catalyst to my long-term bull thesis on Penn stock. The current market reaction has been lifting the stock price since the acquisition. Unfortunately, with only a small four-figure portfolio at this time, we're only up $119.45, which is equivalent to a 26.27% gain since our cost basis was $30.32 a share. Congrats. Can't even buy a new pair of Apple AirPods. Remember from previous episodes, contributions are much more important than performance this early into the investing journey. We want to add a couple zeros, right? Just so you know, 26% gain within two weeks is a very high return. Most investors look to get 8 to 20% return an entire year, which is 12 months, let alone in a matter of two weeks. I want to set the expectations early. Penn National still has a lot of work to do to justify the current market cap of almost $4.3 billion right now. Many investors are buying the future growth opportunity and upside potential. I do believe $4.3 $4.3 billion is a very low valuation for a company that is now an owner of a unicorn called Barstool Sports. 
There is no sports media company tied to sports betting like it. There is no loyal fan base like it. $450 million valuation for Barstool was a steal in my opinion, as long as the Barstool Sportsbook, set to launch later this year around August time, it has to be a clear competitor to DraftKings and FanDuel, the main rivals at this time. Why should I keep talking about this? Who better to talk about the Barstool acquisition, none other than CEO Jay Snowden. As an investor, I try my best to always stay on top of investor meetings and articles written. Let's listen in to a recent investor presentation. We found the right partner. The structure was great. We were aligned. Price tag was good. Equity cash mix was good. And we felt like we got an absolute steal on price because people don't appreciate how unique Barstool is. This is a company that is, their revenues have been up 50% a year the last couple of years. They're profitable. Most small media companies are very unprofitable. Did you hear that? Barstool is already profitable. And most importantly, they have this super loyal audience. The Barstool loyal fan base has been following Barstool Sports for multiple years, not just one or two years. Barstool isn't a new company. People don't go to Barstool app or listen to their podcasts or, or, or watch their video blogs or follow them on, on Twitter, Instagram. They don't do that just because of the name Barstool. They do it because of what's behind Barstool. And they're doing that because they love the content and they love the people that produce that content. Lots of ideas in the pipeline to move fast. Dave Portnoy knows what he's doing when growing a company. There's not another Barstool Sports. So they're so unique. And, that, and so I go back to that question that we were asking our earnings call around the fort. Like, hey, this is, you, you've started to build a fort. How do you fortify it? And Dave has some really good ideas, which I'm not going to share today because I don't want anyone to know about them in terms of fortification of the fort or the moat, excuse me. But there are some ways that, as good as this was first announced and received, that there's ways we can move faster than the competitors who are now trying to catch up to what we did. And number two, most importantly, and I'm going to hand it over to these two guys, that there isn't another barstool sports. I believe competitors in the sports gambling industry have missed the boat big time. Big things coming. So many other valuable things to learn about Barstool if you're not up to date. So we feel like we, we found the right partner, amazing company, and we think we're going to do enormous things together. And so I want to make sure that you guys, one, just kind of know the back story because of how this all comes together. And then number two, that you guys learn more about what Barstool is and isn't. As a long-term investor, Will there be bumps like corrections in the positions I hold? Sure there will. These corrections or sell-offs are welcomed as long as my bull thesis remains intact over the months and years. Do I know exactly how the Barstool Sportsbook will look on my phone or how the Barstool brand will be implemented at Penn National's casinos? Nope, not at this time. Only the management team has control over that stuff. I'm making an investment in Penn National's management team that they will implement everything while I get to sit back and watch from a distance. Will there be things that I don't like? Sure there will. Is that a reason to sell? Possibly. I will have to make that decision when the time comes. At this time, I'm not playing for peanuts. In this case, a couple hundred bucks. I'm looking to make thousands with my money, and I'm willing to wait it out and stay the course to collect my profits in the future. That's my personal goal an investment philosophy, which doesn't work for a lot of people, maybe like you. Remember, I'm in a position where I don't need to touch my investments that I'm currently putting in this portfolio over the next one, two, three years. I'm a long-term investor. Maybe not like yourself. Maybe you need access to those funds. So just keep that in mind. Let's talk about Fiverr briefly. 
Have you noticed their most recent update? Fiverr just launched a logo maker that uses artificial learning. News like this is one reason I like Micah Kaufman's background when it comes to startups. If you didn't know already, Micah is the CEO and original founder of Fiverr. He has many connections in the venture capitalist world, and he obviously knows that artificial intelligence and machine learning is a huge industry in itself. To have an AI technology in today's time is key to growing in the future. That counts for all companies around the world. Continue to innovate or be disrupted and go bankrupt, maybe like Blockbuster and Toys R Us. What's up, Netflix? Hey, I see you, Amazon. Welcome to the world of innovation. Just as a quick mention, Fiverr reports earnings next week. Just so you know, another big catalyst for stocks to go up in price is during earnings season. The small cap stock like Fiverr, a big swing up or down is expected since it's a very new company to the stock exchange. The $21 IPO was only last summer. The stock closed at around $39.90 on the first day of trading. For your information, Fiverr is a very volatile stock. I'll need to digest the earnings call and review the financials once they are released next week. I may continue to build my position as long as my growth metrics fall in line with my estimates. Now that's a great segue to the last item I wanted to talk about for this episode. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I received a great question in the comment section last week. Let me read it. Thanks for the info for how to research a company. This is the first video of yours that I'm checking out, so forgive me if you already have this out there. I plan to check out more soon. But it would be super helpful if you could show your research into the companies that you are interested in investing. Also, to talk about the importance of how you use metrics like P.E. ratios, dividend yields, or cash flow to determine whether a company is worth investing in. Fantastic question and topic to wrap up this episode, my friend. First, let's reference the first point of showing my research into the companies I'm interested in investing in. My research is extensive and constantly builds on itself as the days, weeks, months, and even years tick off. My goal is to highlight a few research techniques as we progress with these episodes. There's a ton of information I want to hit on, and luckily, There's plenty of episodes planned for the future. Remember, I'm just getting started. If you didn't know already, these episodes are meant to be watched consecutively in order. Now that we're up to episode 13, I've highlighted quite a few things I like about Fiverr as well as Penn National as long-term investments. If there are more specific questions once you catch up, I'd be glad to discuss my opinions and thoughts in the comment section and also as audio responses highlighted in my episodes like I'm doing right now. My goal is to not influence anyone's investment strategy, but just show you what I'm doing. I don't have to convince you to buy or sell any stocks. I only have to convince myself, and that's all that matters. Maybe you could learn a few things as I grow one of my portfolios here on YouTube. Back to the second part of your question. As you mentioned, Price to earnings ratio, dividend yields, and cash flows are all very important metrics I review prior to building a position in a company I want to be a part owner in. Let's incorporate a visual aid to highlight some of the metrics that I look at. Here's a photo of our brain and mind. We use our brain and mind to make all kinds of decisions each day as well as investment decisions, right? Now let's think. What goes into our decision-making progress prior to buying a stock? It's a binary question, right? Should I invest in this company now? Your brain will say yes or no at that moment. Now using logic, why would our brain say yes? Yes, I'm buying this stock. I'm investing in this company right this second. For me, the first thing I need to do is find a company that I understand. Second, I curate all the content about the company for review. This includes balance statements, cash flow statements, CEO and management information, recent articles, recent videos, and the list goes on. Remember, you're investing in a company, not just the ticker on the board. Once you accumulate all this information, let's think about the reasons 
you may want to invest in a company. Has revenue been growing? That's a fact, right? You could definitely look that up, look at the past revenue numbers and see if it's growing or declining, right? Do I think the CEO will grow the company? Obviously, that's an opinion, right? You might think the CEO is fantastic. He's definitely going to grow it. I might think the CEO is definitely not going to grow the company. Do I think the market cap is too high or too low at this time? That's another opinion, right? You might look at a stock's market cap and say, hey, that's definitely low at this time, whereas I might think it's very high at this time. What's the P.E. ratio at this time? That's a fact. You could easily look that up, look at the metric, and see exactly where it's at. Do I think the P.E. ratio is high or low at this time? That's another opinion, right? You might think it's high. I might think it's low. That's definitely an opinion. How about this one? What are the P.E. ratios of the competitors in the industry? That's an important one, right? That's a fact, right? You could definitely look at the competitors' P.E. ratios and see where that falls in line with the company that you're looking to invest in. Do I think the company has an edge over the competition? That's another opinion, right? You might think there's an edge. I might think there's an edge. We might both agree or we might disagree. That's definitely an opinion. How much did the company earn last quarter? Or how about last year? That's another fact. You could definitely look that up. What will the company earn this next quarter? That's an opinion, right? The odds of you having the same projections as me are, are very low. What's the dividend yield? That's another fact. Look it up on your smartphone. There you have it. You have your dividend yield. Do I think the dividend yield is high or low? That's another opinion. You might think it's high. I might think it's low. What are the cash flows? That's a fact. You look it up. What will the cash flows next quarter be? That's another projection, right? Your projections might be different from mine. I could continue to go on and on with hundreds and even thousands of different metrics, but I don't want to bore you, right? As our brain digests all of the facts and metrics out there in the open, our brain will begin to formulate an opinion and potentially a bull thesis on a particular company. Our brain will put a higher weight on certain metrics over others. Maybe the revenue growth is 20% of the reason why you will be buying shares of a stock. Maybe there isn't a lot of information of the CEO's past history of being a CEO at a, another company. Maybe there aren't many interviews to review to get an idea of the actual person behind the name. In this case, the CEO category may be weighted as only 1% or maybe less of a bull thesis. Before entering a position into a company, I need my brain to hit 100% or at least close to that number, which is when I pull the trigger and start buying shares of stock. Over time, will the 100% yes bull thesis go down or up? Sure it will. News will continue to be released about the company that I could have never projected into my original bull thesis. A great example of this is just like Fiverr and their announcement with their AI, artificial intelligence technology that they're working on for logo creation. I didn't know they had that in the works, right? But now I'm incorporating it into my bull thesis. As I mentioned in one of my previous episodes, our brains are fully developed around 25 years of age. I have been uploading tons of information in regards to the stock market since a kid. The way I was raised, the schools I attended, the friends in my inner circle, all of these influence the way I think and curate information into a bull thesis for an investment. This is the main reason I have an edge over everybody else when it comes to investing. Do you have friends that drink those seltzers? If you notice people around you that have been drinking these seltzers, well, guess what? There's a company called the Boston Beer Group, right? Look it up. Find some articles about the launch of their drink called Truly back a couple years ago. And now look at the chart today. Have you taken notice of the growth of the Excelsior business? Data continues to hit my brain every single day. I know a ton you don't know. And you probably know a ton I don't know. That's your edge to investing. Everyone has one. Just be aware of what's going on around you and start researching publicly traded companies that are available to multiply your money based on your personal edge. So let's end it there. That was a little deep, right? Your co-pilot definitely needs to rest his brain now.
once again, thanks for tuning in for this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Portfolio is a little over $1,300 right now. This is a long-term journey, and any signs of a pullback are welcomed in my opinion. As always, do your own research prior to making any investments. Read the disclaimer on your screen fully. Remember, all opinions in this episode are mine and mine alone. I'm not a financial advisor, and this episode is for entertainment purposes only. Maybe I'll see you again in the next episode. Big plans ahead for this channel. Peace.